understanding your triggers. Like there's an emotional relationship yeah. with food. Like everybody needs to understand that. So he he messaged me and I, I always tell him just be aware. He said, I think peanut M and M's are a trigger for me. And <laughs> that sounds so, that sounds funny, Wait, but no. it doesn't it, sound I, funny at all. I know yeah. that. Yeah, I'm like, yes. <laughs> yeah, they're right next to you. up until two PM he hadn't really eaten anything. Right. And that was his first piece of food for the day yeah. and i said whoa right i'm like yeah. that's literally like taking like a drug right there and just getting the craziest dopamine release yeah. ever because there's nothing that's slowing that, re- that 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 insulin release so you have a little bit of fats mostly carbs and sugars that are just sending you on this full-fledged like high loving it and yeah. thus you're like you're still hungry because they're not going to keep you full and thus you you think it's a trigger Good. Here good. good. I, yeah, yeah. Sounds good. Welcome to Barbell Shrug. I'm Anders Warner. We snuck out onto the roof of the Hilton downtown at the Bay, hanging out with Doug <laughs> Larson, Travis Mash, and Zach Russia Low from the Flexible Dieting it. Lifestyle. That name is no joke. We're here to talk about some macros today, lifestyle choices. Every time I turn on your Instagram account, there's like a, a rice cake with an M&M in it, <laughs> and it smothered in ice cream, and then quads hanging out. Oh, so man. we got some stuff to dig into because I want to eat like that, but I have no control over what goes into my mouth. If it's in front of me, it's going down. That's what we just talked about. <laughs> so I need to learn how I can control this thing. What is like the diet? How do you work with these people so they can understand that maybe ice cream isn't the best option? <laughs> but if you've got a problem like me... It can be an option. Yeah. yeah. So I, f- I feel like your Instagram might be a little misleading. By the way, we were talking about the hierarchy of nutrition and like your you got this cool pyramid set up where you you have you know different priorities for what's most important first, second, third, fourth. Um, so I, I kind of want to dig into what those priorities are, and then I really want to hear like, do you really eat like your Instagram suggests <laughs> all the time, or is that just like for show, or what what the, what the deal is there? Well, it, it's super interesting. So Instagram is a very visual platform. Yeah. So. What I've become known for is like I initially came into the industry teaching flexible dieting, but then I saw a huge void. Nutrition was one of those things like we would have these foods that would quote unquote be off limits because either our diet didn't let us have them or they didn't fit into our macros really really well. So like if we want ice cream, we can't really eat a lot of it if uh, we're not, if we're trying to lose weight Uh, and we're on macros that represent that. So I saw a huge void in the sense of I personally love food a lot. It's something I enjoy, but I didn't want to have the certain foods and blow through my macros for the day and thus be hungry and thus leading me to eat more than what my macros needed to be to in order to reach my goals. So I started recreating a lot of the foods that I craved in a way to where I could fit my macros. I could eat a lot of it. I could do it on a daily basis. Oh, yeah. And that is where, like, when you look at my page, it looks very misleading until you scroll down and you look in the macros for something, and you're like, whoa, like, this yeah. is different. And that's what I became known for. And so over the past, like, three years, I've created over, I mean, we're approaching over 1,500 recipes that are unique. That's key. I think that's the thing that most people are missing. You just get people macros and say eat whatever you want to stay in these macros and you know people can't sustain that no they blow it in the morning they're like cool i'm gonna blow my breakfast and then come dinner you don't have any left you have nothing left and you're like you're screw this diet yeah. Yeah. i quit yeah. yeah usually that's like okay all my carbs and fat are gone and i need 100 grams of protein what do i do <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <Just> drink protein <laughs> and <laughs> were you so when you got into this did you start with the macro piece or was this like i'm gonna try the paleo i'm gonna try the zone all this shit sucks. <laughs> Why can't I get stronger? Why can't I reach any goal? Like, if I eat an ice cream, I'm going to just – I ruin everything for the week, and then I just ate a gallon of ice cream all at once. Like, I quit. See, yeah. where's the progression in this for you? You just described me perfectly. Yeah, me so, too. So. Uh, I'm with you, bro. <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> yeah. So my first – so when I was 
20 years old, I uh, had a career-ending hip injury. So I played college basketball, believe it or not. Vertical, we're all pretty much vertically you challenged. Shoot from half court? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I could shoot it very well. I could handle it very well. You but gotta I, speak um, for yourself. I'm not vertically challenged. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I played. I played Division two, uh, Paid for my college education. And but during my sophomore year, I tore my iliopsoas tendon, oh, man. which you guys understand the body no. very, very well. I tore that, That's and bad. it felt like a gunshot in my hip. It, it was mm. it was awful. Mm. And um, I didn't run for uh, over a year. I was in a wheelchair for over a month after surgery. It was pretty damn yeah. serious. How, how did you tear? I've never <laughs> that, heard that's of That's a really weird thing to tear. Tearing. Yeah, yeah. I've never heard yeah, of anyone. Was, of the doctor said there was only th- three other cases in the history like they've ever seen. They consulted oh. with doctors. So what mm. happened was it was, just, is, it was insidious. I was neglecting so many things in my nutrition, my sleep, my mobility, my strength training, everything, to where it was just slowly, just slowly, just tearing away, yeah. tearing away, and then all of a sudden, just done. That's crazy because it seems like that would affect your body in so many ways. You know, just because the psoas originates in your lumbar spine, mm-hmm. I just feel like you it was every. It was oh. awful. Yeah. yeah, it was tough. So mm. that was a that was a long run, but the career was under over just like that, and so that started my world into like the fitness industry in the sense of like, why the hell did this happen to me? Like it was like this, this huge moment. Like my whole life I was known as Zach, the basketball player. Like I was known as the, the white kid on the basketball team and all my friends were all six, nine and black and they could, (laughs) and I was just crafty and I was a leader. And when times got hard, like my D one teammates were all looking for me and to help them. And, but that was gone. Like, like that and I was like whoa like what what do I do now and I my why became I didn't want this to happen to anybody else and so I learned that okay nutrition sleep recovery um, it, mobility strength training all these different things n- are very very important and so I started learning more and more and more about them and my first like uh, introduction to nutrition was paleo uh, and that's a good place to start. Yeah, it, at that at that time, it was eliminate, all, yeah. eliminate all the fun real quick. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's a yeah. great <laughs> place to start and quick right away. <laughs> quit right away. This yeah. is yeah. not sustainable. Yeah. No, week so, one. <laughs> yeah, it was hard, man. It was uh, it was one of those things that just created these frameworks that I had to stay within. Yeah. And it was either a win or a loss. It was either you yeah. won and you stayed within the paleo frameworks, or you lost and you didn't. Yeah. And so it became like this this good bad relationship with food. There was the bad food. Lots foods. of bad for me. Yeah. <laughs> Lots of bad, yeah. And so like you said, I- if I ever had ice cream, it was like I'm getting this out of I'm getting it out of my system. It was yeah. that mindset. I'm mm. going to get this out of my system. Mm. And so I would I would be good for 2 weeks and then after like after so much willpower, I would binge <laughs> and uh, over yeah, the two with weeks a, with a win lose mentality like that once you've lost it's like well fuck it, i already lost yep. so i might as well just keep going i'm yep. going all out yeah. Yeah. guns blazing it yeah. was crazy yeah. and well, i didn't realize i had a problem i just thought everybody did it i was like oh a cheat day like because everybody was talking about yeah. cheat days i'm like oh what's well, good for my metabolism and uh, yeah. it's like well yeah when you restrict for long periods of time and you're eating <laughs> less calories than you need yeah. then your body's screaming at you that you need more calories and so <laughs> i love the justification like oh well i've been i've been fasting and this is really good for my <laughs> metabolism yeah. to how eat this gallon of ice cream <laughs> i'm doing the right thing right now so so how, I many, am. how many times have you had that debate with your friends like if i eat all the ice cream in one day my body won't digest it so it's like i'm not really eating it but if i <laughs> ate a little every day yeah. it's probably more unhealthy so, so far that's my favorite takeaway <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I, i'm done now yeah. yeah 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 so that was a that was a, a super interesting evolution for me so i remember i, I realized i had a problem when I, I left the grocery store i went to the grocery store with a list of all the things that i wanted yeah. to have my most glorious cheat days for i yeah. used to look forward to them and the day after was very sad because I knew I probably was about two weeks away from the next one. Yeah. And um, But I left one day at the grocery store, and I forgot one thing that was on that list, and I got so scared. I was so scared that, like, oh, my gosh, I almost didn't get that out of my system. And I was like, I have a problem. Yeah. I have a problem. <laughs> so I have to – I had to reevaluate. And so I, I went back to studying nutrition again and, and really understanding. So I, this happened when I, I read a book called Start With Why by Simon Sinek. And it really challenged me to find the why behind anything. And I went to the why of nutrition. And so I started learning about calories in versus calories out. I started learning about, wow, so if I track my macros, my protein, carbs, and fats, those actually 
help me hit my calories as well because there's a certain caloric total with them, but they also have a unique role in our bodies. Right. And I understood of like, whoa, like how did I not know these? And these are like two of the highest priorities of nutrition. And I'm only focusing on the next one on that list is meal quality. And that's all that I was really focusing on right. and, uh, our food quality. Let me say that. And mm-hmm. I was like, whoa, like I understand food quality is very, very important. But if I'm neglecting two other humongous parts of it, then I'm leaving a lot on the table. And so I went back and so I started doing something called If It Fits Your Macros. Uh, now it's synonymous with what's known as flexible dieting. And so I started tracking my macros. And what happened was when you track your macros and you have this whole world where there's no foods off limits, I went from one extreme to the other. I can have all the foods now. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I was like, whoa, I was like, this is really cool. Christmas. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was like, cheat day every day. But I'm, then I'm like, whoa, not really because those cheat days didn't have a macro total associated with them. So you learn moderation and you understand that like when I had these macros, if I wanted to fit in a Pop-Tart, if I wanted to fit in ice cream, these things, they ha- I can fit them in, but it's going to make it harder if I try and fit them in all the time to hit my macros on a daily basis, I'm going to be hungry. Right. And I'm not going to hit my protein. I'm going to be having weird meals where I'm just having tons of protein shakes or I'm having tons of chicken breast and all that. This became, I remember getting to the the end of the problem begins. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) And and so it just becomes like really, really weird. And so then I went through this little thing where I would just fit in all the foods that I didn't have before, but then I'd end up cheating again because I wouldn't hit my macros, I'd go way above them because I was hungry. Right. And I was still learning. This is a learning experience. So one thing I've learned over the past six years on this journey is the fact that never be too hard on yourself and understanding that everything is learning. You're just you're just you're, you're building every single day, learning from one experience to another. So what I learned from that was I needed to go back to the, the basics again. I needed to not neglect food quality. Like I did when I was just focused on my macros, I right. needed to come and bring it all together. And so what the magic really happened when I focused on food quality and macronutrients and I brought them together and that's where, um, it just became like life changing for me because then I was truly free and for other people, mm. that's Absolutely. The, people need to hear this, you know, like people are just beginning the whole, if it fits your macros world, they, they, they need to, they need to know this upfront mm-hmm. so they don't have to go down this terrible road and make so many mistakes and quit. Some just quit. And yeah. There's almost a battle between like the, the paleo type people that focus on quality and then like the macros zone type people that focus on quantity when really, as you're saying, they're both obviously important. Like mm-hmm. I think, I think especially when you're starting out, it's easier to grab onto one of them because it's like I only have one thing to think about, and that makes it very, very simple. But then once you kind of get a handle on either one of them, you go, oh, okay, I got some value from learning about quality or quantity, either one. Now I'm going to swing the other way and see see what I'm missing out on the other side. And then once you get some experience, right. you, you blend them together, and then that's like when your kind of real lifestyle diet begins. Yeah, Not really a diet, but just how you value eat. value to that. You know, like when you start doing, you know, say you do paleo, and it's that first step, and you know you're starting to get, you know, learn about foods that are good for your body. And so it's a good stepping stepping stone to doing more of what you're talking about, which yours is more of the holistic approach, I think. Yeah. So so and and that it's, it's it comes back to learning. So in the simple fact that like when I have somebody start tracking their macros, I want them to start with the mindset that you will not have to track anything ever again. So you'll be able to eat intuitively. So uh, if anybody's starting to track your macros. L- Think of it in the sense of like in two to three months, you should not have to be a slave to your scale. Oh, that's so awesome. Mm-hmm. So that's the, the very reason well, I hate it so much. Yeah. That's the best the, part. Yeah. That's the best part about macros is that it teaches you what's in your food. Yes. So yeah. you know what the hell you're eating. Mm-hmm. And there's feedback at every meal. Yep. Like the constant feedback is what really sets it apart in my mind from from telling a beginner to do paleo where they're, they kind of don't know at the end of the day, did I do a good job? Did I do a bad job? Mm-hmm. Well, that one thing wasn't good. And then you might have that mindset you were talking about earlier about like, did I do, you know, was it a bad day or a good day? And it's, it's very, it's very bipolar mm-hmm, in a sense, right. like where the, the macros thing, like every single meal, every single day, you know exactly how good of a, or how bad of a job you did. And you're right. starting to learn what's in your food and then you don't have to weigh and measure because now you know what you're eating. Yeah. It's, it's, awesome. it's such a learning experience. So then, so like, for example, I, I get like in the very beginning. So like when I start with somebody and I only coach clients right now that are like over 400 pounds. 
like f- like uh, four hundred pounds. Because yeah. that's I, so awesome. I, I don't like. I get asked all the time, Zach, will you help me step on stage? Will you help me do this? I'm like, I don't do that. I'm not taking years off your life. I want to add years to your life. Yeah. So like, I only work with people that are. Uh, if I get them to lose two hundred pounds, they're putting thirty to forty years on their life. Man, that's a super interesting yeah. thing though, because there's a lot of the uh, the mental side that goes on when someone's at that four hundred pound mark. And oh my gosh, yeah. Yo, know, I always wonder like when someone goes on kind of one of these like flexible diet lifestyles where we're, we're allowed to give them a decent amount of carbohydrates in a day or, you know, people are addicted to that stuff. And if you give them a little bit, all of a sudden they turn into like the addict. Yeah. And well, it's the thing weird, is like, I-, I could be that guy. Yeah. If I didn't me train too. and have like the background in training, like you give me like a yeah. bite of ice cream. I'm like, you know what? Day's over. Yeah. Sitting on the couch. Here we go. Yeah. But like, I, I don't have that like mm-hmm. addiction side of it. And like, that's gone to the extreme. How do you work with people like that that clearly have some mental and emotional connection to food? Food. Yeah. It's 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 rewriting their story. So it's going to the trigger of right. what is actually going on here. So if somebody takes a bite of ice cream, there's so many different things that are going on that they're telling themselves that if they take that bite of ice cream, they got to be they have to be more like in control in the sense of like I can put it back like but that happens over time so in the beginning I might not have them do that or if they have that bite of ice cream I have it right after a meal yeah. that keeps them full mm. so for example this is a great example so I have a client who's over 400 pounds he's uh, he started with me at 435 he's just over 400 right now it's been only a couple months and um, I mean when you're really overweight you can lose a lot of weight really yeah. really quickly you're no. doing a lot wrong the so that's okay percentage wise it's really not that big no yeah. Yeah. no in the grand scheme of things yeah. so uh, he uh, and one thing in the very beginning is understanding your triggers like there's an emotional relationship yeah. with food. Like everybody needs to understand that. So he he messaged me and I, I always tell him to be aware. He said, I think peanut M and M's are a trigger for me. And that sounds so, that sounds funny, I mean, but no. it doesn't I, sound funny at all. I know yeah. that. Yeah, I'm like, yes. <laughs> they're right next to you when you check out of the grocery store every time. That yeah. beautiful yellow bag <laughs> or Snickers. <laughs> Snickers is my thing, man, dude. Like. It just is, like, and then I'll be like, "Well, that's kind of a meal." Yeah, damn lie. I worked out no, three hours like, ago. Yeah, I'm gonna have this. Yeah. And so um, I asked him. I said, "The first thing was like, okay, when did you have this? Like, when? What? What yeah. time of day?" And he said, um, "I said, what? What were you doing up until that point?" He's like, "Oh, well, I was super busy. Um, he's a SEO specialist, so he does a lot of web development, and everything like that. So he's behind a computer a lot." And so he up until that point was working on a project for a client and it was really like time sensitive. And so up until 2 PM, he hadn't really eaten anything. Right. And that was his first piece of food for the day. Yeah. And I said, Whoa, right I'm like, yeah. that's literally like taking like a drug right there and just getting the craziest dopamine release yeah. ever because there's nothing that's slowing that, re- that, that, that insulin release. So you have a little bit of fats, mostly carbs and sugars that are just sending you on this full fledged, like high. Loving it. And yeah. thus you're like, you're still hungry because they're not going to keep you full. And thus you, you think it's a trigger. And I said to him, I said, tomorrow you're going to have lunch. And then right after lunch, you're going to take those same peanut M&Ms. And you're going to say you can eat the whole thing if you want. But I want to see how many you have. Mm. He said he had two. Yeah. And that was it. And so it's just understanding how everything fits and understanding are the – it's like doing a study. Or is everything constant? So if you want to do a really, really good study, you got to keep things constant and change one thing. And so with him, there were so many moving parts. But just understanding there's not a causal relationship. There's more than likely a, a correlation yeah. happening. And getting to that root and understanding, like, okay, what is actually happening here? Right. Gets him to understand that most foods are not triggers. It's just when you actually eat them. Yeah. It's when you actually eat them and what is going on. And if you are in a stressed out state, please do not pick up that ice cream yeah. right in front of you because you're probably going to eat the whole thing. Right. But I feel like the best thing is just not have it available. Yes. If it's available, you're going to eat it. Like yes. if there's ice cream in my fridge it's, or freezer rather, it's yeah, I'm probably going to eat it. Yeah. But if it's not there, then I can't eat it. That, no, that's the easiest way in my mind. Yeah, no Absolutely. problem. And, and then make it. <laughs> and, yeah. yeah, and make it e- even more difficult. And that's the thing. Like, I just want people to be so in control. Hmm. I want so 
um, I was interviewed the other day and uh, it was a girl who has a huge Facebook community talking uh, and teaching them um, about macros and everything, but she has more of a holistic mindset. And But she's like, how do I get people to get started with flexible dieting? And she's like, do I have them like eat Oreos every day and everything like that? And I'm like, no, 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 no. I'm like, heck no. Like, don't go to another extreme. So if somebody has uh, more of a good, bad relationship with food, I said one day a week, doesn't matter what day it is, Get them just to take a bite of an Oreo. That's it. Put yeah. it down. That's it. And understand and then wait the next day, as long as they hit their macros, how do you, how do you look? How do you feel? I'm good. You're yeah. not going to die. Everything's good. And then th- this minimal, minimum effective dose. And so th- I think I-, I just want everybody to be in control and know that they are in control. So like in the beginning, not having that ice cream there. Mm. But once I get to a point in time yeah. where I'm like, okay, let's try it. And then understanding that more than likely if you have ice cream three to four hours after your last meal, you're probably going to overeat. Yeah. But if you have it right after. Then you just get a small. You just want the taste. Right. Like yeah. we all just mm-hmm. want the taste. Yeah. Like in reality. and Usually oh, after every- you have the taste, you're like kind of disappointed. Yeah. Like, ah, oh, <laughs> that was delicious. But I probably, it wasn't as cool as I thought it yeah. was. <laughs> yeah. Right. Depending on what it is. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Sometimes yeah. you're like, that was amazing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know I mean? Well, actually, when it, when it is amazing, I find that the best thing to do is to to have it right before you're going to leave. Mm-hmm. So, like, like people buy me Skittles because they know that I like Skittles. I never buy them myself. And if I eat a few, they taste really good and I want more, right? But but what I've found is that I can eat them and not eat, want to eat more if I just, like, grab a few. I'm walking out the door. I put them in my mouth. And by the time I'm done eating them, I'm in, I'm in my car and I'm leaving. That's and then right. by the time I get home, like, the craving, it's like, that, that taste in my mouth where I'm like, dang, I kind of want some more of these. That, that's all gone. And I'm, I'm, like, reset by the time I get back home. Yep. It's super interesting. See, this is the thing. Like, we're all evolving. Yeah. Like, right. we, we, we're, this is a learning process. Got to figure it out. And you figure out. And, that, and that's the biggest thing is, like, people ask you, Zach, what do you do? Like, what do you, what's the flexible dieting lifestyle? It's, <laughs> I it's, tricked myself <laughs> to being yeah. able to have an Oreo every yeah. once in a while. <laughs> in yeah, a situation where I can't eat the whole bag. But do you have to deal with, you know, so people when they're 400 and above, like, there's some major, normally, there's some major psych- psychological issues going Absolutely. on. Absolutely. Do you have to get really deep, like, talk about their childhood? I mean, like, what? Or do you leave that alone? And you, just uh, you want to as soon as possible. Yeah. You want to, but you have to understand. It's just so, uh, there's never a perfect time. It's just waiting for that time. Usually comes mm-hmm. out. Yeah, it you just comes out. You don't even have to ask. Yeah, they'll and just the, they'll have an emotional day, response yeah. and they'll tell you. And yeah. that's when I know it's like a truly an issue. And, and it's, it's going to the stressors. What are actually causing you stress on a daily basis? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like I want you to feel like you're walking on a cloud every day because you, 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 you are an you understand that, okay, probably at 1 p.m. today, there's going to be a stressor that's coming onto my life. Okay, what do I do? More than times than not, if it doesn't catch you off guard, you're going to be okay. You can prepare for it. You can prepare for it. I think people that, you know, like we live in gyms basically and we're in this weird bubble, especially kind of out here in California, like we're always around healthy people. Like everyone is health-minded. They know what, how many – like a six ounce chicken breast has got this and this yeah. is my meal. There's vegetables around us, but we don't operate inside the cubicle cages right. that people do in offices. Mm-hmm. And that is a landmine everywhere you walk. Yeah, like there donuts. Is, and yeah. they oh, sell yeah. that shit to you like, Come here's your now. kind bar. You're like, oh, that's in a pretty package. Yeah. That might be healthy. Just freaking no. decision fatigue yeah. out the that's a, wazoo. It's a candy bar with yeah. almonds in it. It's so-and-so's birthday today. Yeah. We're celebrating. It's so-and-so's birthday do every it. day. It's Yeah, and yeah. <laughs> I, I think that a diet along these lines and having like a framework is really good for a lot of people because they don't have to beat themselves up because – you're not escaping Susie's birthday party on Tuesday afternoon no. before then, your workout. Now you're an outcast. Let's be honest. Yeah. Now yep. you're like, now, the people are gonna be yeah. like, why do you do that? Well, why are you doing that? <laughs> <laughs> you know? like, yeah. I, I don't. I don't know how many times I've heard this, and this is something that like haunted me. It was like the fact that like, I want to be able to have ice cream with my kids. If my yeah. kids, my future kids, I don't yeah, have okay. kids right now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, when my son comes up to me, Dad, let's go get an ice cream. I'm like, heck yeah! Like we give a high five and we go have an ice cream together. Yeah. Like, that's the things that really, truly freaking matter. Yeah. And I want, but the thing is, I wanted to understand how all that fits. Like, I'm a data guy, so I have a degree in economics. So, like, I really, uh, and how I teach nutrition is opportunity cost. And it's understanding that, like, if I eat this, I'm not eating this. I could have, I could eat, I have two options, I have an option in front of me. I could eat this while choosing not to eat this. Yeah. And understanding that if this is more 
this gives me more utility, which is the way we gauge happiness in economics, then I will choose this one over this one. Yeah. We're going to take a quick break. When okay. we get back, I want to talk about some longevity stuff. And we mentioned in the pre-show gut health. Um, and that gets into a whole, a whole new world. Whole world of longevity, understanding kind of like, yes, you can eat ice cream, but mm -hmm. there's a lot deeper. Mm -hmm. The deep brain in your gut might not agree with that all the mm -hmm. time. So oh, um, we'll get into that when we get back. Absolutely. Welcome to the Shrugged Collective Program Vault. Over the last six years, we've been leading the charge in online strength and conditioning programming and coaching. And for the first time in the history of the Shrug Collective, we're combining our 11 best-selling long-term and short-term accessory programs into one membership site called the Program Vault. From Olympic weightlifting to strongman, leaning out, nutrition, you name it, our 11 best-selling programs are yours for $47 a month. Get to shruggedcollective.com backslash vault and you will find immediate access to our 11 best-selling strength and conditioning programs. <laughs> Welcome back to Barbell Shrug. We're here with Zach Rush Alo, flexible dieting Woo! lifestyle. Before we left the break, I want to learn about some gut health because, look, we can go on these flexible dieting lifestyles, but there's also, like, that's just the, the macro level is kind of like a higher level of importance. And the gut health thing has taken over the world. And it's all, not only has it become, like, a really hot topic, but we know nothing about it because there's jillions of bacteria in there that are calling the shots. And we don't even know really how it's happening. Like, we'll yep. take some probiotics, prebiotics. We'll take all these things. But no one really knows what's going on. Yep. What, what, how do you talk to your clients, especially ones, you know, that are just like learning about macros and then all of a sudden it's like, okay, now we've, we've got this thing down. Let's talk about the next level. Yeah. So I'm no expert at gut health. Like uh, yeah. I'm going to preface that. Real scientist. Yeah. Like I'm, I'm, I'm pseudo. So I'm just, uh, <laughs> <laughs> practical. <laughs> yeah. I'm practical. So I, 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 I'm in the sense of like people see me as like a chef now. I have no culinary background, so I'm a actually able to teach the lay person how to cook because they don't need any type of culinary background. Yeah. So that's really helped a lot. But in regards to gut health, it's just doing your best. Like what do we know that's going to help your gut health? It's right. um, And it's super interesting. Like a lot of people who wash their hands all the time. Oh. And it's like, well, you might be kind of setting yourself back in so many different ways like actually allowing your immune system to take in more bacteria oh, and dude, more yeah. i have said that for years right <laughs> i can't my buddy sitting over here we've been arguing about this whole <laughs> after you go to the bathroom he gets sick all yeah. the dang time and he washes his hands all the time <laughs> yeah. i never get sick i yeah. mean i did get salmonella a few weeks ago <laughs> i mean besides that, that i was, I was horribly that, sick yeah. <laughs> now, you grew up you grew up in the country like you live in the country yeah. now like people people that that are in the country they're they're outdoors more they have dogs like like kids that have dogs yeah. versus kids that live in the city they always have healthier microbiomes yeah like there, there's there's something to not being too like freaky clean all the time literally yeah. my grandmother would sit me in a mud pot like when i would go visit in the summertime because <laughs> my mom yeah. is like a clean freak she'd be like hell no in the yeah. mud and see i would just <laughs> splash probably poop all I'm over the, me I'm, knows, the, I'm the dirty kid too <laughs> my wife gives me the shit all the time about like you're so dirty yeah why are you so? i'm like i'm also so healthy yeah. The dirt is a good thing I, for us. I don't think I ever washed. This is terrible. I shouldn't say that. But I, I don't think I washed my hands after going to the bathroom. No way. Yeah. yeah. I mean. Hey, give me some. Yeah. Hey, the hey, sink is hey, dirty. give me some. I'm yeah. the same well, way. I found, I mean, but think about found, it. found him with hands. your dirty hands. Yeah. Yeah. But, but think about this. <laughs> share, share some of that. <laughs> your penis is like the clean. It's, it's covered. <laughs> Wait, right? his penis or all penises? <laughs> all, all penises <laughs> here are covered. Our penises are clean. That's true. He's probably getting your dick dirty by putting your hands on it rather the other way around. It's. <laughs> yeah, that's all I've been right. saying. Right. Is this coming out in your new book? Oh, yes, yes. <laughs> we have a full <laughs> section uh, about, on yeah, dick about clean dicks. <laughs> yeah. uh, but the biggest thing is. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, anyway, shut the fuck up. Back, back <laughs> to nutrition. Uh, <laughs> oh, man. Hi, Mom. Clean Thank your you. penis. Uh, right. Mom, when you listen to this, uh, <laughs> just know that. Just bear with us. Mom, please don't listen <laughs> to this. <laughs> uh, but the biggest thing is getting them to understand, like, it's not going to be perfect. We still don't know. We probably still will never know. There's so many moving parts. But just understanding that you should be eating a lot of uh, vegetables, a lot of green, leafy vegetables. You should be getting your fiber intake. So that's one thing that's neglected a lot with macros is 
people will supplement with fiber supplements. It's like, no, 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 no. If you're doing it right, you should be hitting your 25 to 35 grams of fiber from your vegetables, from your fruits, all these micronutrient-dense foods that also have fiber in them. Right. And just doing those things, like, yeah, you can have your kombucha, you can have your probiotic, you can have your prebiotic, you can have all these different things, but, like, don't be so crazy about it. Like, don't overly stress. Don't – if you're walking around with your kombucha, don't think that you're better than anybody else. You are. Come yeah. on. Eat, eating a bunch of junk and then <laughs> and then having kombucha and sauerkraut That's and whatever else, like, as a Band-Aid on this problem of not eating very well in the first place, it's kind of like eating like shit, being fat, and then taking fat loss pills. Yep. <laughs> Thinking, like, okay, I'm going to get shredded without kombucha changing my diet. It tastes like poop, yep. man. I mean, I've had it you once. You like it? No. Come on, dude. Oh, really? No. Go, no. You man, you can't, you can't move to SoCal. I'd rather eat you sauerkraut. Yeah, yeah. Sauerkraut. <laughs> well, I smashed sauerkraut. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Is that what you put it on? <laughs> yeah. Of course you put it on yeah. hot dogs. What do you mean? Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Uh, but he just looks at you like, oh, you eat hot dogs? <laughs> yeah. That's gross. Yeah, right. Damn right. Rice cake, ice cream sandwiches. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You can't judge. You know better than me. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, yeah. I like food. Food's yeah. good. Yeah. Food mm-hmm. should be enjoyed. So I kind of wanted to move on to, so, like, pro, like, your gut like yeah. let's just not be over and our gut actually has a direct correlation with our brain and yeah. everything like that so in the sense of you're if you're so anal about like different things about your nutrition and everything like this how many times have you thought something and then you get an upset stomach right it's like whoa like what's going on here and like you think something into reality, I, absolutely. And so I, I, I just want people to understand like it's, it's never going to be perfect. There's no such thing. Right. But you're just trying your best, and that like that kind of leads into like when somebody wants to go 100% clean but still hit their macros. Like they want to say and only organic, natural foods and nothing processed whatsoever, versus an 80-20 rule. So like 80% of the time, you're checking off the box of your micronutrients. Whole minimally processed foods, things like that. But then having 20%, you can fit in whatever you want. That's not in that other category. Makes total sense, yes. But what happens is if you want to do 100% and and that is less stressful than 80-20, go for it. But if you're stressed out all the time because you're trying to stick to that 100%, then I believe that extra stress is worse off than the 20% that you'd add in of those foods. Mm -hmm. Uh, I I don't see there's yet to be, uh, I I could be proved wrong, but I've yet to seen research showing that an abundance of nutrients, an overfilling cup of your nutrients, once you've hit your, your levels that you need, a super dose doesn't do you any better. And so I believe that the 80-20 mindset and understanding that if you eat a food, you don't like you eat an Oreo or anything, you don't have that negative. You don't get that negative like I'm a failure or I just cheated feeling. Right. I believe that like you just eat and you focus on hitting your macros. You focus on that 80% of the time. You're doing your best. You're you're checking off those boxes. And then 20% of the time, that's your lifestyle calories. Yeah. That's your ice cream cone with your kid. That's your uh, that's that's the thing that creates true sustainability, mm. and that's where it all kind of fits in. Like if you want to have this food that you have a, a higher chance of binging on, have it right after your meal. It's like w- yeah, it's one piece of w- because we all like grew up in gyms. When someone hands me a meal, I very rarely think like food great. Yeah, it's like yeah, that's the protein that looks like six ounces. Mm-hmm. Cool. Yeah, like. Oh, I'm, I should be eating more of that because I'm trying to get stronger. Like, I need a pound of that or mm-hmm. whatever it is. Makes life like, so much easier. So when you think about performance. I never think yeah. about, like, how great is dinner going to taste tonight? That's usually secondary to, like, I'm going to need some steak. I probably need, like, a starchy carbohydrate. You're seeing it as vegetables. fuel. Yeah, like, being able to disconnect, like, this is delicious. That's a terrible way to go about, like, yeah. health. Like, does it taste good? Because the thing that tastes good, well, your your taste buds, one, will adapt to, like, an eating vegetables all the time. Mm-hmm. Then all of a sudden they start to taste delicious. But the ability to just kind of be mindful of, like, learn. And macros is a great step in the right direction to, like, get people moving to where they want to go because it's like – Nope, four ounces is, you know, that's 24 grams of protein. Mm-hmm. We at least have, like, a framework of, like, 
a way to think about that in a different manner than right. delicious. Well, the biggest thing is too is like people <laughs> underestimate how many calories they're actually eating. Like there's crazy studies showing that like the plus or minus is like over 2000 calories. Like so somebody says that they're eating 1500 calories in reality they're they could be eating up to 3500. It's like whoa, plus or minus 2000. It's pretty insane. Yeah. It's I mean, um that screw science completely up you know? well in the sense of like people are eyeballing they if you oh, ask yeah. them hey hey travis how many calories are you eating today uh and you think oh yeah i ate like 2200 but in reality you could be because you're not educated and i'm just i'm not no. like saying go through your whole day i'm just saying like how many and then you actually track and you're like whoa it was like four thousand yeah so like that's the thing and and people once you become educated like that you can be within 10 percent of that so if somebody's asked me zach how many calories do you eat today i can be within 10 percent, and that's the closest way you want to be because say i eat 10 percent more than i normally would what happens was is my neat my non-exercise activity thermogenesis which is just like me fidgeting yeah probably because i ate 10 percent more i'm going to be more fidgety I'm probably going to stand more than I was sitting. My energy is going to be higher. I'm going to take the stairs more. I'm going to like hop around, right. uh, things like that. So I'll end up being at a, a net same result. Yeah. And so being within 10%, that's usually what happens. Well, one thing that's super cool about kind of the platform you've created through Instagram, um, and I assume you have a YouTube channel yep. as well. You were doing some videoing. Um, Yo, kids these days like need this education mm -hmm. process, and you're not. I assume you're not reaching forty-five year olds. There may be some of them, but no, yeah. you're really kind of like leading the education piece for kids and making nutrition cool. Yep, and giving them a resource that's not some fucking teacher screaming at them about vegetables, like about the food need, pyramid. Yeah. yeah, people need fun cool people to follow that they can like learn something every day and they're intrigued to oh cool like what's the next step and maybe a picture of an ice cream cone like makes them think differently about where they're at because there so many people are just trapped in a society or their bubble doesn't look like our bubble and they have to go find a place to get some decent education yep and your platform has really created this awesome resource for kids and you know 20 something year olds that it's like, man, I relate to that kid, and he's doing it right. It's a super cool platform it's, that you've created. It's it's uh, it's the most like it's the coolest feeling ever. Yeah, it's one of those things. Like I believe that I'm I'm teaching the future parents. Yeah, uh, and so what's really cool is I have actually a lot of parents that actually send me pictures of their kids actually making and eating the recipes. Yeah, I have uh, five different instructors around the country that teach kids cooking classes, and they awesome. teach the kids That's using awesome. my recipes and they send me pictures all the time we're working on a kid's cookbook i want to be able to travel more um and do more of these kids events and and being able to do more teaching like that but i, I just want the younger generation to understand that like you guys are all like we're all in control was that a conscious thing of like man i really where like i've always just been yeah. a big kid like yeah. i always like we lift weights for a living, dude. Yeah, <laughs> we're with you. <laughs> it's I love bright colors. Yeah. Like, I, yeah. I just yeah. I like having fun. I've always so like when I was younger, like any job I had was with kids. My all uh, running kids camps yeah. or in, anything like this. I was given at 14 years old the ability to run my own camp uh, when I wasn't even supposed to be employed. Like at that time, and I was able to run a really successful kids camp. And so yeah. I, that's been the one constant. Every job I've ever had has been with kids, and I've always resonated and been able to create. Um, I think it was Steven Spielberg, and I watched his documentary, and it, like with E.T. and all these movies, like. And, and I heard the way he was talking to the kids in order to get an emotional response and get them in the actual character. And I realized, whoa, this is what I've been doing with kids my whole life. Because you play, you make anything a game. Yeah. You yeah. make anything a game. And so with my platform and what I've been able to do is I made food fun again. And I made it in the sense of like – I. It's, it's surface level in the sense of it looks really, really pretty and it looks terrible for you. Yeah. So then I give people what they want, okay, so it looks really bad for me. So I'm going to have this, but then I give them what they need because it's in a macronutrient profile that they can eat on a daily yeah. basis. And it's so incredibly easy to make. And it's such a like a, a market, a niche that's so rarely touched. I mean, we live in gyms, so everyone's yeah. always hammering performance, performance, performance. It's like, what about living? Yeah. Like, 
And with I, I've noticed a lot of it as I've gotten older where people aren't training anymore and they're just trying to live a healthy life. And mm-hmm. I struggled with it for a couple of years. Like, I didn't know what, like, a base weight was for me mm-hmm. where I wasn't training two to three, four Do hours X. a day. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And all of a sudden I was, like, 10, 12 pounds heavier than my competition weight. <laughs> and I was like, am I fat? Yeah. Am I out of shape right now? Yeah. I don't really know where this – I'm still is. trying to figure that out. Right? You know, like, <laughs> that pint yeah. of ice cream yeah. every night. Yeah. I don't know. It's super interesting because our our hunger is based on what we do the most. So it's very habitual. Yeah. And what's happening is when people go from training a ton to not training as much, their energy expenditure, how many calories they burn, is not as high. What happens is your hunger doesn't change. It takes a while. So what happens, you still are still hungry. You're still eating the same amount of food, same amount of calories. And thus, you start gaining weight because you're in a caloric surplus now. Totally. And so you start putting in, before you know it, like a lot of these competitive athletes, they'll put on 10 to 12 pounds like nothing because they're still eating that same weight because they were structured. Their hunger was based on that. And uh, and so, but that's this understanding. So if I know that I'm uh, going to be burning less calories, I need to... If my hunger is going to still be the same, this is going to be a good tip. So if you're not training as much, you're, you have to just be aware that your hunger is still going to be as high. What you need to do is your macros are going to be lower because your caloric expenditure is going to be lower. You want to find and substitute foods that give you the same amount of food volume. So you're eating the same amount of food but for less amount of calories. And that's where a lot of your vegetables comes in. Instead Damn, of vegetables. instead of your, yeah. your whole cup of rice, you do a quarter cup, but then you pair it with some vegetables. Man, I think this is something that needs to be talked about. You know, I played college football and like, you know, you go there, you gotta gain weight, you gotta get huge, mm-hmm. especially the linemen, you mm-hmm. know. And like they they die early. Yep. You know, there's so many studies out there that say all the collegiate and God heaven forbid the NFL, which I work with a lot of collegiate and NFL football players. Yep. But man, they don't. Say, they say, "Oh, good luck. Thanks for you know, starting for us for ten years. Peace." You know, yep. and these dudes are three hundred and fifty pounds, and they're you know six six, and they now now what? Yeah. They have no idea how to live life no outside clue. of it. And in the heart, in the it's so sad. They could change one to two things. And their life is forever better. Yeah. And like, they're going to need to because they're so beat up. Their yeah. brains are right. Ra- yeah. They need to start getting healthy. Yeah. It's a it's lifetime just, of trauma. Trauma of small car wreck. Da, 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 you know? yeah. Well, it's hard because we're taught to focus on the wrong things. Right. So they're focused, oh, I need to start eating healthy again. Da, 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 da. And yeah. so they, they restrict the, sh- the hell out of themselves. And then what happens, they end up right back. They quit. Yeah. And they don't know what they're supposed to do. But if they can understand that like they are in control and they understand the principles that are happening – like uh, what they truly need to focus on and like what we've talked about, then they can win. I love that you keep coming back to the principles. How do you combat <clears throat> when clients come to you or, you know, whatever, who, however they're communicating with, it's like, oh, should I, should I try this? Like, oh, should I try this? Because there's so many of these like fad pieces that come out all the time. Every day. And yeah. it, it's, it's, it's cool in the sense of like, so for example, there's this intermittent fasting craze yeah. going on right now in the sense of like, oh my gosh, like I've tried all these things, but intermittent fasting is working for me. I'm like, well, when your eating window is a lot smaller, it's very hard <laughs> yeah. to overeat. Yeah. So if, if you were normally eating for 16 hours in a day and you were sleeping for eight, but now you flip it on its head and you only eat for eight hours and you're fasting for 16, yeah. then it's a lot easier to eat less food. Right. There's nothing magical happening. You are just in a caloric deficit now. Yeah. And you're, you're just, letting your body recover a little bit. Yeah. But yeah, it, yeah. it's going to make sense. It's going to make sense. So that and, that and that's the biggest thing. And so when a client comes to me and asks me questions, I never say, well, you shouldn't do this. Yeah. It's like you have empathy in the sense of like I was once where they were. I didn't understand the principles, what were happening. Right. And having empathy, knowing that like – if anybody gives me shit or talks shit to me on social or anything like that, they just don't like what they don't understand. Right. Like, I, I, I don't put out information that I expect people to hate me on. Yeah. So when somebody comes and disproportionately wants to hate on me, it's because they don't understand what's actually happening and what I'm trying to teach. Yeah. We see this in the weightlifting world all the time. I mean, it oh, is yeah. so from what program you should be on periodization protocols yes. what you just name it and there's someone yelling at someone and it's like uh possibly my athletes aren't like your athletes right potentially i don't know like I we're get not it all training the, time. the exact I hate same Reddit. person yeah. Uh, who is ready? Like, who are these? I'd like to fight them. You, know, you but, always assume yeah. that that guy that's yelling at you is exactly like you. You're like, why doesn't he see it like me? It doesn't. There's just it's endless. 
and from carb intake to protein intake to when it's you all relative eat, timing. It's all and relative. If people just followed the principles <coughs> and understood the principles, all of a sudden now you can play with those principles that, in a way that matter. I'm curious. Uh, um, there's some questions I, I've had. From, yeah. You know, I used to know you know Charles Pulligan. I don't know if you guys know that guy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Brilliant dude. For sure. He's definitely one of my earlier mentors. But um, he would say that some people respond better to fats where some people respond better to carbohydrates. He said back in the 90s, he said probably 30% do better with carbs and then 70% probably do better you know, with fats as energy. What I, are your thoughts? I, I could see that as a correlation, not causation, in the sense of 30% are high level training a ton and need a lot of carbohydrates. 70% are sitting at a desk and yeah. – not doing as much activity. So fats are slower digesting. They, they're they not readily available fuel sources. Right. Uh, they're very good for hormonal health. But in the sense of if you're not training a ton, you don't need a lot of carbohydrate. And I could just, that, I just, that's initially what came to my mind right away. Whenever I hear that ratio, I just think 30% of people are actually training hard and need that's, carbohydrate. That's brilliant. Do you think that genetics come into play though, that certain macronutrients might be better for you versus me? <sighs> It's tough, man. It's hard to say because we get really good at digesting what we eat the most. So our bodies adapt. To so whatever. our bodies adapt. And I, I mean, I'm not an expert in that. I, I don't know the exact answer, but that's what I've seen. Uh, I've I, I've noticed with a lot of people. And I, 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 yeah, I just can't say that like one person's born differently than the other. I just believe that throughout your life you've eaten a certain amount of each of them. And it's just like with anybody. If you go from eating a 60 grams of protein in a day and then somebody says, hey, try and eat 200. It's like, well, first off, they're probably not going to be able to do that. <laughs> yeah. But they're so full because their body is not used to digesting that much protein. Right. And protein is very satiating. That's why a high-protein diet works very well because it keeps you full. Right. And so that's the biggest thing that's happening is you just are really good at digesting what you're used to digesting I love all it. the time. Yeah. And then my, my question, this is, I'm just being selfish because I'm for, I'm, you a, speak I'm, for the, I'm you're still speaking for the people. It's good, okay. good. So <laughs> like is, you know, like you see with, um, you know, if it fits your macros mm -hmm. all the time, people eating pop tarts and donuts, are truly all calories created equally? Like, so carbohydrates S from a donut, same as carbohydrates super, from, it's super interesting. It, if everything is constant in the sense of like, let's compare a sweet potato and a pop tart, uh, very similar macronutrient profiles. Right. So if mind blowing, yeah, right? yeah. It's, it's very, very, it's, it's crazy. Like a sweet potato and a pop tart have very similar macronutrient profiles. So one of them, so let's compare the two. So a pop tart has mostly carbs and trace fats and trace proteins. And so it's not really checking off the boxes for fiber, not really checking off the boxes for uh, micronutrients, etc. Right. So the sweet potato checks off the box for fiber, checks off the box for micronutrients, is a heavy carb source. Okay. So let's say both of them provide us with 35 grams of carbs. Our body's going to see both of those carbs the same. But the one from the sweet potato is going to be digested a little bit slower because it's paired with fiber. So it's not going to send you I mean, but most people are not eating just a sweet potato. They're eating it with a protein or eating it or with, with like a big chunk of butter on top of oh it. Oh, gosh. <laughs> <laughs> of course. Is that bad? <laughs> right. So, but like, it, what about the additives and preservatives that go into the. See, that's part? the thing that I want. Like, th those are the tiny little details that like people want to overly stress about. We still don't know. Right. We still do not know. But I know what, what I know is. One's providing more micronutrients. So if you've already filled up your bucket of micronutrients for the day, you spilling it over with that sweet potato is not going to change. Your body still sees it as the same amount of carbs. But if you uh, have not hit, so if you're deficient in micronutrients, yes, your body's going to see a difference. So if you're overeating Pop-Tarts, right. then you're going to become micronutrient deficient because you're not checking off that box. So that's where the 80-20 comes in. Cool. It depends. Are you eating like an asshole or are you not? Don't like, eat like an asshole. Don't eat like an asshole. Like that's a real thing. Try. Yo, don't Try. you think we all know the answer already? We do. But no one wants – they want someone like you to tell them. Yeah. They, want the, they want the picture. Mm. Well, they, think, want, they want some reassurance. Yeah. 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 My okay. wife who did not come from like – you know, I come from performance. You know, that's my whole life is, you know, I eat to perform. I want to be the best in the world. Absolutely. My wife, you know, grew up and she was, she's an artist and her family really enjoys cooking. And so you know, it's it's a little it's a little different in uh, in the way that we look look at things, but like uh, a person 
like Drew versus me? Is, is it going to be the same when you talk to these two people? It's looking at their day and understanding what what how how their relationship with food is. What are their and so one of the things I do with any anybody that I work with, I said, what are your three three to five favorite foods? If I were to say, what are your three to five foods that you cheat on? You think that you would cheat on your diet with? So my goal is oh God, that's so easy. <laughs> pizza, <laughs> right, right away. I'm like, but, pizza. but the yeah. but the thing is, so if they give me those things, I can look and find recipes that tackle those cravings right. to where there's never that void of having to cheat because you already have them and they can fit into right. your macros. So that then so when you look on my page, that's a lot of what you see because that's what I've become world class at because I'm able to do that. That creates true sustainability because there's no more that excuse to cheat. Mm. There's no more. Right. And so that's one of the biggest things is like understanding what foods that you um, love the most and then finding a way that they fit within your macros. Sweet. So her, your, yours and Drew's are going to be completely different. Right. Because you guys are two different body types and two different goal sets, etc. Yep. Um, what, what are some of your most popular recipes, by the way? Uh, so I have a protein frosty, so like a remake of Wendy's uh, protein fro- like the, any type yes, of frosty. Yes. They love those. Uh, so is that supposed to be like a healthy version of a, of a, of a frosty? Like yep. w- what's in that? I hear frosty and I'm, I'm curious how it's made. <laughs> uh, that's super curious. So like <laughs> and, have and what is the recipe? <laughs> and he should make his one. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. I know, Travis right? is over here taking notes. Yeah. He's like, so good. Okay. So, <laughs> protein, got it. So, yeah. there, so like there's a few recipes. I, des- I just have a special community of people I just cannot share. So like there's like three of them that I just cannot, I just vow to them that because they invested in us, I would. So it's my protein frosty, my protein cookie butter. And uh, actually those are the only two. So you can't tell us. I can't tell you guys those ones. Those are top secrets. What's number three? (laughs) Because those two are going to be actual products that come to market. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to give you guys a top secret. (laughs) So like if you ever had frozen blueberries. Delicious. Of course. And you put almond milk on top of it. Haven't done that part turns into a frosty <laughs> like it turns into ice have you done this uh uh-uh. we still coconut milk and then put it in the freezer for uh, a minute and then eat it just take frozen blueberries yeah. put it in a glass and pour almond milk and stir it up and it just turns into ice cream i wish my wife was here right oh now. and you can <laughs> put like what is it not Splenda, but what's uh, like stevia. stevia if you put sure. a little bit of that in it changes the whole world right there but like <laughs> it's it's the most it's the simple thing and it totally oh if i don't you, crave if you ice think, cream anymore so so travis if you think that <laughs> is like life-changing for you life-changing like, oh, we'll, we'll, we'll be we'll be best friends yes <laughs> yeah, right. yeah. Very, very easy my wife's gonna love this guy so, yeah. travis, <laughs> travis has gotten progressively hungrier throughout this episode yeah, yeah. It's, I, been, it's been noticeable i do want to eat yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I mean I, I would say like uh, on my instagram page i give away so many recipes so like protein cupcakes, protein cakes, protein donut, like literally everything you can think of. Uh, I made, I taught people how to make a homemade dough, pizza dough, and you can make a pizza in your waffle maker. So like literally like anything you could possibly think of. Just, I love this. Just, when did you start the, the actual cooking and putting recipes together? Uh, probably two and a half years ago. Yeah. About two and a half years ago, I went to the University of Google, started searching for recipes. There, Most of them were really bad they didn't work out well and so i just started checking off the box okay i'm craving this let me try this and then people started like whoa like can you start sharing these so i started sharing and they're like hey can you make a recipe book so i i didn't know how to make a recipe book so i just found a, a, a software and i built my own first recipe book and uh i pre i did a pre-order and like i sold like 500 copies in a week and i was like killer I was like, whoa, I was like, this is kind of cool. And so Very eventually, cool. uh, yeah, just started to build and build and build, and we've sold <laughs> So this so Frosty, let's get back to that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> let's, let's get We're going to break course. you down. You're like, going gonna to get bent. <laughs> how do you, like, how would I, I mean, how do I get to share in this Frosty? So, like, it's secret. So do you sell it? Or oh, like, yeah, it's in my it's in my recipe book. I, so I, buy the recipe book, I get that. Buy the recipe book, or we have a, what's called a Macro Magician uh, membership site, oh, which is well, like a, it's like know. a, it's just a, a host where literally in between a recipe book i post recipes that literally are in real time that i kind of came up with and uh and so you're getting it up you're getting it right away you're getting it right away you literally right when it's posted on instagram it's already in uh, a recipe on the site so, so you, you get those in real time you said you had like 1500 recipes like are you just in your kitchen constantly tinkering and like mixing and matching and trying to make new stuff because that, that's a lot of recipes to that's come a, up with on your own that's a lot yeah i'm just kind of plugging and playing it's fun because when you do 
you create one recipe and then you might not touch that recipe for four months. But during those times, you find out about new ways to use different ingredients. And then you go back four months from yeah. four months after and you're like, whoa, this will take it to the next level. Mm. And then eventually it's just with your nutrition it's with everything. Yeah, like, yes. you know that with your training and everything, like you just plug and play and yeah. then you come back and you repeat. Every single, every single time, you just go back and you try again. You try again. And it then, sounds like programming. Right? You know, yeah. like my program now is like so different than two years ago because I, you know, keep trying new things and yeah. plugged it in. That's my, you know, this is making me want to cook, and I've never been a big. I'm not. Yeah. I, yeah. I'll go just into the fridge. Yeah. And just eat whatever <laughs> leftovers. I go and like this, so and then I go like that. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> I get yelled at a lot for eating with the fridge door open because it's very rarely like making it even to the microwave. It's what? just. So th- okay, so this is another thing. This is another thing. So, with habits, it's eating more meals, no more grazing. Yeah. That's where people Gra- really screw grazing. themselves up. Uh, <laughs> grazing is what gets Dude, you. Man. I am a cow. I am a grazer. <laughs> like, I'm, I'm uh, I knew somebody was gonna bring that up. <laughs> yeah. So, what is the necessity to have like, if you're say you're wanting to start the whole? Like, I want to start cooking and mm-hmm. you know using some of your recipes. What does one have to have in their kitchen? To just make some awesome recipes. I mean, not much, guys. Like, literally, I mean, you can, I mean, obviously, you need a pan uh, yeah. to cook anything on, on the stove. Like, that's super simple. Uh, maybe a, a pizza pan, uh, maybe a waffle maker. Um, but those are all very, I mean, most people yeah. have these things. Like, I, I just focus on, so if, if, if I have to make something and I have to get somebody to get something that I don't think they normally would have in their kitchen, I won't make it. Yeah. Or if it's with an ingredient that it's not readily available that you could buy it like freaking a Walmart or Whole Foods or anything. Like I meet people where they're at. That's awesome. And that's the thing. Like if if they have to use, oh, you should try this new sandwich griddle maker or something like that. I'm like, uh, how many people are actually going to want that? Yeah. So like because I don't want people to buy my books and stuff and then have to buy all of these things. Yeah. Right. And then that's another – that's friction. Right. I don't want friction. So I want to create things that are super – super easy and convenient to where people can get quick wins yeah. and drop those barriers, drop those barriers yeah. of entry. Like that's the, that's, that's yeah. the number one thing I, I could give anybody advice is understand where, have empathy for where everybody else is coming. So from. you don't have some space age kitchen. You talking like, I'm, I'm starting to see this like immaculate kitchen. And no, <laughs> not at all. It's super, all right. it's super simple. We literally, I travel, like we did one uh, the other day. It's like, I travel around. I do like, cooking with like i cooked with noah olson the other day i cooked with brooke Ince, uh not too long ago so i travel around the country and like i cook and um just kind of build relationships like that but uh one thing we did when we were in la is i like put on i said hey in in the next two hours everybody enter and write down why we should come cook for you if you live in la and so we got tons of entries and so i picked one person and turns out her kitchen was literally like the size of like us right here together yeah and so just we made it work and it was like a super cool episode and everybody loved it but and and i don't ask them what they have we just make the most of what they have and so like i get there like okay this is what we have we go to the grocery store we figure out we make it work and then that's the thing so like i don't like you don't need any like you don't need anything we want to film we're about to start filming some content where i literally have a griddle on the side of the road and i'm like cooking stuff and then hand it to people yeah, well, like, we're gonna meet up in the lunch room here in a little bit. You're gonna make me some protein <laughs> yeah. ice cream. Dude, I'm, <laughs> I'm about um, to eat my hand now. Where can people find these eBooks, Instagrams, YouTubes, all those things? So our biggest hub, where everybody finds us, and we kind of point everybody in the right direction, is the Flexible Dieting Lifestyle on Instagram. Uh, that's gonna be the best place that you're gonna really get to know me. And um, I think the best thing you can do is if when you're listening to this, is shoot me a, a DM on Instagram. I see them all. I've gotten to a point where I cannot respond to all of them, but I see them all. I see your message. They all, and if it's a really damn good one, I'm gonna, yeah. I respond to the ones that it looks like they spend a lot of time. Yeah. yeah. If you give me a compliment, you say something nice, I'm going to respond. Yeah. To you. Um, so that, I mean, that uh, shoot me a DM. Let me know that you listen to this. That would be really, really cool. Slide into his Slide DM. into the DM. Just Slide make in, it happen. Just make <laughs> it happen. And then you can find us at flexibledietinglifestyle.com. Uh, that's our hub where we kind of point everybody in the right direction. But And then on YouTube, if you just search in Flexible Dieting Lifestyle, you'll see awesome. our YouTube page. We have a bunch of free recipes everywhere. And um, by the time I think this comes out, we'll we'll have put something together for you guys' specific audience Love and it. to get them started. Very Sweet. cool. Travis. Oh, MasterElite.com. There it is. Yeah, so go there. Go to Come watch the big man lift some weights. 
I can still lift some weights. Right? So my yeah. athletes can lift more weights, but <laughs> I can I still lift some weights. I'm the strongest 14-year-olds I've ever seen in my life. I the, yeah, Dude, I it's insane. It's insane. Stupid, right? Yeah, so I had the strongest youth in the country. Unreal. For sure. So I don't know how Nothing we got makes them. me feel worse about myself than watching it, your 14 year olds It makes me feel – you know, the other day I, felt my, I found myself competing with Morgan, my 14-year-old. Yeah. And I, I – and then in the moment I realized I'm competing with a 14 year old, I just dropped my head. My <laughs> it's an all time low. You're not you know? even half my age. Yeah, I know. <laughs> not even. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So. You got a killer podcast as well. Yeah, yeah. You can go to the Barbell Life. So yeah. Episode dropped today. Episode dropped today there with Jonas Serration. People, I can't believe people don't know more. But he's the head strength coach for Carolina basketball, and he's amazing. That's awesome. really cool. Okay. Yeah. Very cool. Cool. Doug. Uh, you can follow me on Instagram as well, Douglas E. Larson. Anders Warner on Instagram. Come to shrugged.thelowbackfix.com. We have all kinds of fun programs, strength and conditioning, and physical therapy combined together, getting people healthy for low back pain. Save 20 bucks on your first program. Make sure you get over to YouTube, iTunes, subscribe, leave a nice comment. Don't be a jerk. Come and hang out with us, and um, we'll see you next week. Thanks, dude. Strong Coffee Company is a community built by people like you. People that take the time to educate and to apply all things that matter. Whether you're in the gym, the office, or at home, we want to help make you better. Introducing our full, rich, instant nutritional energy drink, the Cafe Latte. Visit strongcoffeecompany.com. Use BBS20 to receive 20% off today.